Alrighty, so the study that we're going to look at is the Rosenzweig study, Rosenzweig et al., which was done in 1972, which is going to help us answer the learning outcome um, about how our environment can affect our physiology. Okay, And so basically the environment we're looking at is the environment in which the rats live and the physiology is uh, their brain size and, and how complicated their brain is. So basically the, the theoretical proposition or the hypothesis was that animals raised, actually I'll highlight that, animals raised in highly stimulating environments will demonstrate differences in brain growth and chemistry when compared with animals reared in plain or dull circumstances. So basically what we had was 12 sets of three male rats from the same litter. So what they had was th there was one litter and they'd take three male rats from that same litter. They'd put one of them in, an impo uh, in a control setting. They'd put one of them in an impoverished or poor uh, or boring or dull setting, and then they'd put one in a an enriched, really fun, exciting setting with lots of stimulation. And so obviously you see in the control group, um, they were put in with several other rats um, in a normal sized cage, n several other rats of their own litter, and given sufficient food and water. In the impoverished uh, setting, the poor setting, um, the boring setting, it was one poor little rat all by itself in a small cage with also sufficient food and water. And then the third sibling from those three male rats was put into an enriched cage, which was like a rat Disneyland, hence the Mickey Mouse, with all kinds of fun games to do, the running wheel and all kinds of things, and a few other friends to hang out with, also given sufficient food and water. They, um, did this with 12 different um, sets of the male rats. Next, got uh, three different conditions. Those three conditions were tested 16 different times for four to 10 weeks each um, without the researchers knowing which mice they were examining in the end. So this would avoid um, researcher bias or um, expectations by the researchers or confirmation bias. The results show that the cerebral cortexes, um, which is the outside um, section of the brain that is responsible for uh, responding to experiences, movement, memory, learning, and sensory input, so any, you know, sights and sounds and tastes, that part was thicker and heavier in the enriched rats, okay? Also, increased activity of an enzyme acetylcholinesterase, uh, which we can associate with memory a little bit, so increased activity of this memory enzyme. Um, there were larger neurons, okay? Um, there weren't more neurons, but there were larger neurons, which are the brain cells. It's my lovely picture of neurons. And a greater RNA to DNA ratio, which is actually really important for cell growth, okay? And then the last uh, result was that the synapses, remember that place where two um, neurons meet each other, if we, if we zoom right in, um, those were 50% larger. So if you can imagine, if the, if the synapse is larger, the space where that chemical electrical transaction happens, if that's larger, more uh, neurotransmitters can be transmitted, more action can take place. Two, the results, you know, these are the effects of the environment on the, an impoverished versus enriched environment, right? On the physiology of the mice's, uh, of the mice's, mice, mice's brains, okay? So uh, thicker and heavier cerebral cortexes, increased activity of acetylcholinesterase, larger neurons, greater RNA to DNA ratio, and 50% larger synapses, okay? So that is real results. Um, the, let's see, the learning outcome is discussing the role that the environment can play on physiology. So some discussion points, uh, were the, was the rats handling different when the toys were changed? So were the rats handled more in the enriched environment? Maybe just the fact that they were given skin love by experimenters' hands, that might've been enough to enrich their brains, but that later became unimportant because they resampled it, um, holding them all the same amount and there was no difference. Were the impoverished rats stressed by being all alone, which could have affected their brain structure? Once again, the answer is no. They looked at other stressed brains of rats, and there was no difference in those brains. Um, and those rats had received, like, electrical shocks and stuff. 
Um, the la uh, one other question, do wild rats have even more developed brains than the enriched lab rats? And the answer is yes. So none of these lab conditions can substitute for a real life situation, which is something to think about. Can we generalize any of this to humans? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. And lastly, um, in a recent um, study, well, maybe in the last 10, 15 years or so, um, Olson et al. actually tried to isolate um, not just the enriched environment, but the role of the exercise wheel in the cage. Was it the exercise wheel or was it the enriched environment in general? And what Olson found was that the exercise wheel was actually the more significant factor in the whole enriched cage that affected the brains um, of the enriched rats. So quite interesting, you know, is it the enriched environment or the exercise? And there is some research out there, according to Olson, that says that the exercise is more important. Going back real quick. Lastly, the real life application. Um, you know, why does this matter? Who cares? Well, we can, you know, use this information to help study um, how we can improve memory and how we can prevent memory loss in old age. We can also research the effects of malnutrition on intelligence. Malnutrition being, um, you know, a sign of an impoverished environment and how it affects our intelligence. Um, some human evidence to support this animal research would be um, that human brains that have been examined that you know of people who died naturally show that the more skills and abilities a person had when they were alive, the more complex and heavy their cortex was. So you know if you think about people who played instruments and were really active and were able to you know taught themselves lots of things, their brains were heavier and more complex. And lastly, examinations of blind people's brains show thinner, simpler, and less developed cortexes in the visual, visual regions of their cortex. So once again, if they weren't using, if they weren't getting visual stimulation because they were blind, those parts of their cortex were smaller and thinner and less developed. Okay, so that's some human research to back it up. And that, my friends, is how we answer the learning outcome for um, the effect of environment on physiology. Just going.